Did you know that the average American spends a staggering $1,500 per month on non-essential items? That's nearly $18,000 a year going down the drain. Imagine if you could redirect even half of that into savings. Well, stick around and I'll show you how to become a saving superhero. Today, we're diving into the game-changing world of savings. Trust me, mastering this skill is like unlocking a cheat code for life. Whether you're dreaming of a tropical vacation, eyeing a new ride, or you just want to sleep better at night, saving money is your ticket to financial freedom. That's right, today I'll take you to how to master the art of saving money and become a savings pro. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our video updates. Plus, it helps us spread the Thrive Wise love to help more people thrive wisely. Now, let's begin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Saving money? That's easier said than done. And you're not wrong. We're living in a world of one-click purchases, targeted ads, and FOMO-inducing social media. It's like navigating a minefield of temptation. Let's break down the hurdles. First up, impulse buying. You know the drill. You pop into the store for milk and walk out with a cart full of stuff you didn't know you quote-unquote needed. Or worse, late night scrolling turns into a surprise package at your doorstep. Then there's the budgeting beast. For many, the word budget is about as appealing as a root canal. It feels restrictive, complicated, and let's be honest, kind of boring. And let's not forget about lifestyle inflation. As your income grows, so does your spending. And suddenly, that daily latte and monthly subscription box feel like necessities. Add in peer pressure, the quote-unquote treat-yourself mentality, and a dash of financial illiteracy, and you've got a recipe for empty pockets and maxed out credit cards. But don't worry, these obstacles aren't insurmountable. In fact, they are opportunities in disguise. So, are you ready to flip the script? Because it's time to flex those savings muscles. Let's dive into the nitty gritty of becoming a savings pro. So grab your cape, because we're about to turn you into a financial superhero. Let's start off with number one, the Great Expense Excavation. First things first, let's go on a treasure hunt. Except we're hunting for expenses to cut. It's like playing Where's Waldo, but instead we're asking where's my money going? Start by tracking every single penny for a month. Yes, even that gum you bought on a whim. There are tons of apps out there to help you, or you can go old school with a notebook. Either way, prepare for some surprises. You might find that you're spending more on artisanal dog biscuits than your own food. Once you've got your spending mapped out, it's time to play quote-unquote expense survivor. Vote off the unnecessary expenses from your financial island. That unused gym membership? It's gonna have to swim with the sharks. The streaming service you forgot you had? Time to say Netflix and chill out with the subscriptions. Number 2 budgeting. Now, I know budgeting sounds about as fun as watching paint dry, but hear me out. It's actually more like creating a personalized money playlist. You're the DJ of your dollars, deciding where each beat or buck goes. Let's talk about the 50-30-20 rule. It's not a hard and fast law, but more of a guideline to get you started. Think of it as the basic recipe for a financial feast. You've got 50% for needs, that's your rent, groceries, utilities, you know, the stuff that keeps you alive and functioning. Then there's 30% for wants, because we're not robots and life should have some fun in it. And finally, 20% goes to savings and debt repayment. That's your quote-unquote future you fun. But here's the kicker, you can remix this however you want. Maybe you're gunning for early retirement you can bump up that savings percentage. Or perhaps you're in a treat yourself era and need a bit more in the wants category. It's your financial remix. Make it work for you. All you need to remember is that a budget isn't a financial straitjacket. 
it's more like a GPS for your money. You wouldn't drive cross country without directions, right? So why navigate your finances without a map? Number 3. Goal Setting Setting financial goals is like planning the world's most awesome vacation. You need to know where you're going, how you're getting there, and what you'll need along the way. Start with your big juicy goals. Want to buy a house? Awesome! Planning to retire on a yacht? Sure, let's make it happen. Break these down into smaller, actionable steps. It's like eating an elephant. You do it one bite at a time. Not that I'm advocating eating elephants. Let's save the elephants and spend the peanuts instead. Now, let's talk SMART goals. No, I'm not calling you dumb if you don't use this method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-bound. It's like the secret sauce for goal setting. Instead of saying, I want to save for a house, get specific. How about, I'm going to save $50,000 for a down payment on a $250,000 house in 5 years. See how that's more tangible? You can track your progress, and it's hopefully achievable given your income. It's relevant to your life plans, and you've got a deadline to light a fire under your butt. Number 4. The Power of Automation Here's a secret. The best savers are often the laziest since they set up automatic transfers and just forget about it. It's like having a robot butler for your money. Set up automatic transfers to your savings account on payday. This way, you're paying yourself first. It's like hiding vegetables in a kid's meal. You're sneaking in good financial habits without even trying. Also, here's a pro tip. Name your savings accounts based on your goals. Bali or bust, Ferrari Fund or Rainy Day Dough are way more fun than savings account number 2. Number 5. Invest in Financial Education Knowledge is power, and in this case, it's also money. The more you understand about personal finance, the better equipped you'll be to make smart decisions. There are so many ways to level up your financial IQ. You can read personal finance books, I promise they're not all as dry as toast, listen to money podcasts during your commute, take a free online course on investing basics, or follow financial experts on social media. Just be wary of get-rich-quick schemes. Think of it as going to the gym for your brain. Except instead of visible abs, you get a visible uptick in your bank account. Number 6. The Emergency Fund Life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect it. That's where your emergency fund comes in. It's like a financial airbag. You hope you never need it, but you're really glad it's there if you do. Aim to save 3-6 to six months of living expenses. Start small if you need to, even $500 can make a huge difference in an emergency. Keep your emergency fund in a high yield savings account. It's like giving your money a job while it waits to rescue you. Remember, becoming a savings pro isn't about never spending money or living like a hermit. It's about making conscious choices that align with your goals and values. It's about building a life where you control your money and not the other way around. If you're still not convinced, how about we take a look at Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha himself. Now you might be thinking, sure, easy for a billionaire to save money, but here's the kicker. Buffett's wealth isn't just about smart investments. It's about his lifelong commitment to frugality and saving. Picture this, a man worth over a hundred billion dollars still lives in the same house he bought in 1958 for $31,500. He drives a modest car and get this, he uses a flip phone. Buffett's breakfast? McDonald's. No caviar or champagne here. But here is where it gets wild. Buffett started his wealth building journey at 11 years old, delivering newspapers and saving every penny. By 16, he had saved today's equivalent of $53,000. All this while his peers were probably blowing their allowance on comic books and soda pop. Buffett's philosophy is do not save what is left after spending. 
but spend what is left after saving. This mindset turned a paper boy into one of the wealthiest people on the planet. It's proof that small consistent actions over time can lead to monumental results. If that doesn't inspire you to start saving, I don't know what will. All you need to remember is that saving isn't about deprivation. It's about freedom. By mastering expense tracking, smart budgeting, goal setting, and consistent saving, you're paving the way for financial independence. Small changes today can lead to big rewards tomorrow. Your future self will thank you for starting now. Also, what's one unnecessary expense you're willing to cut out this week to boost your savings? Share your money-saving commitment in the comments below and let's hold each other accountable. And well, that's basically how to master the art of saving money and become a savings pro. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And hey, it seems that YouTube thinks that the next video can completely transform your financial situation. Watch it to find out whether they're correct. And please don't forget to click the subscribe button to see more videos on how to thrive wisely. Till next time.